Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We are here at Expona 2023, and we're here with Grover Neville from Indulger Magazine. Yep. Grover, thank you so much for taking a few moments. I understand you went to school kind of in the Cleveland area, is that I right? I did, in fact, <laughs> yes. Um, I went to school at uh, Oberlin Conservatory, so nice. um, Cleveland-ish local. It is, it um, is. But yeah. also participated, you know, I, I went to downtown Cleveland and I saw my fair share of Cleveland um, symphony awesome. concerts and yeah. got in the scene. I did a class actually with some of my professors for the um, uh, classical music review scene in Cleveland. So, no kidding. Um, beautiful city, really cool city. Uh, also got to see, you know, how Cleveland has changed. I do go back to Oberlin fairly regularly. Oh, and okay. It's been actually really cool to see Cleveland revitalize mm -hmm. and the art scene that is present in Cleveland that I think a lot of people don't give the city credit for. They don't. Um, which is lovely. There's there's a lot of richness in Cleveland that is easy to overlook. The mm -hmm. surface, yeah. No, Cleveland is very cool, and yeah. and I have an appreciation for Cleveland. I'm from Chicago originally, so right. it's also somewhat familiar as a Midwestern town. And then being a musician, I mean, I live in. Los Angeles these days and work in the music industry and film, gotcha. like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, I mean, yeah. I studied classical music and jazz, so like Cleveland Symphony is like legendary, right? The sure. brass section, I'm, I'm a horn player wow. um, as one of my trades. And right. it's like, man, Cleveland horn section was an inspiration to hear as a kid, those old records from the 70s, you know? So you took um, advantage of your time in the Cleveland was, area, it sounds it was, like. It was, there was a lot that, a lot of people, they were like, oh, it's out in the middle of nowhere, it's Ohio, it's whatever, but it's like, yeah. no, there's, yeah. there's cool stuff if you look if you look, there's some really special stuff in Cleveland, so I'm grateful for my time. Well, that's so good to hear uh, because it's sort of full circle and we realize mm -hmm. that um, Oberlin is spinning out amazing people all around the country. <laughs> and it's cool that it's you took common. a little of Cleveland with you. Yeah. Um, now that you're in the industry and you're here as media and you're covering this high-end audio industry, <laughs> one of the things we want to talk about this year is diversity age, race, gender, yeah, um, and just wondering what your, your thoughts are as a relatively young person who's here sort of covering this industry. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple interesting perspectives on that that I, I think I have. Um, I've been working actually in Hi-Fi for a while, so um, I've done writing for Stereophile, I've done writing for other groups. Um, my dad was into Hi-Fi, um, and you know, I, I think I have done some work, whether part-time or full-time, in Hi-Fi for seven years eight years almost wow. okay so it's been quite a while um and, it's and you're not that old I have i'm to 28 say. now okay. i just recently turned 28 this march so um i work full-time you know in not in hi-fi anymore i'm in the music industry and stuff like that um but i still come back because i still love hi-fi and i love the music and it's a, it's a you know for me it's a familial connection right my father was into it now i'm into it okay um, and at first i got into headphones right and the headphones was interesting because the headphone space was a little younger and a little bit um, a little bit more from the computer geek sort of side of things, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. There is, uh, I think, a bit more age diversity in that realm than there mm -hmm. is in traditional mm -hmm. two-channel, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and so moved eventually from headphones, which was what I could afford, you know, in college, um, to uh, two-channel systems. Now I live, you know, obviously at my own place and I have a nice stereo system and things like that. And I have my studio set up, but that's kind of, you know, it's its own thing, but I have, I have speakers, I have amplifiers, I'm surrounded by it. And which a lot of people don't have, to be clear, yes, right? I yes, mean, that's what I common. want to get at. You, you inherited this from your father. I did. It was a familial connection, and it was, you know, I think an important part of hi-fi, and this is, some, this is where it transcends a lot of the gaps of age and race and gender and all that sort of stuff, is if you have that familial connection with people, it makes a huge difference, you know? Like, I listened with my dad. I would dance in front of the stereo in my diapers when I was a little kid, right? right? But, like, there was a connection there, right? right. It wasn't just about my experience of the hi-fi or the hi-fi, you know, because... People who maybe don't listen to a lot of music can come into a hi-fi show and be like, well, that speaker system sounds really good, but it's a dis there's a distance because no they don't connection. have the human element, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to have the human element of it. It's, it's important to have that. I think to speak to your, your initial question, though, about diversity in hi-fi, we have challenges. You know, we have serious challenges, right? You don't see uh, a lot of people of color at hi-fi shows, right? Um, and I think that may be, well... It has to do partially with the history of hi-fi, right? Um, and, and, you know, you look at the 70s with JBLs and Bose and, you know, those sort of like, hey, a hi-fi is almost like what we consider a TV system now, right? It's like this entertainment system that you gather around like radio in the 30s or, again, home theater in the 90s, right? 
And the way that progressed has been gradually as it becomes a cottage industry, as it's no longer super mainstream, right? What's mainstream is Apple HomePods, right? That's home mainstream audio. Thank you. So as high-end audio is no longer mainstream, it becomes more expensive, right? Much like um, high-performance cars, yes. right? Or high-performance watches or, mm -hmm. right? Like everybody can have a Casio. We have watches yep. on our phone, right? We don't need to wear watches. So watches now become, Cameras on the phone. they become this pursuit, right? Mm -hmm. And so as audio has become a pursuit and it's become expensive, you see the crowd start to age because they remember those stereos that they had in the 70s and now they're buying maybe Wilson's or Magico's or other, you know, $100,000 systems, So I like see that, that with, with older people who experienced it in their youth, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. decades ago. What about young people? Are they seeing it as an upgrade from a HomePod? Which, by the way, if you get two of those new HomePods, mm -hmm. you're getting pretty close to they an entry-level Magnapan system, good. right? They, they do sound good. good. However, you're tied to one ecosystem you're that's one not ecosystem. even high yeah. fidelity on uh, yeah. you know high yeah. res files it's unfortunately not open, right? it's not an open system um, i'm saying they're spending enough though yeah. to where a, a, a pair of those is going to run you near a grand plus your phone and plus extra so you're yes. into entry level hi-fi equipment yeah. are you seeing that that's an upgrade from young people where they're sort of aging out of of you know computer equipment and I subwoofers. Would say typically the pathway that I've observed is you're into computers or, or gaming and mm -hmm. things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then you find out that you like the music, right? Mm -hmm. And then of course vinyl is cool and that's a whole other thing, right? So like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna buy some nicer speakers for my computer, mm -hmm. right? Okay, you know, now I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna get into like headphone amps. I'm gonna buy a nice pair of wired headphones. Okay, mm -hmm. now I started to get a little system. All right, now I'm gonna buy an integrated. Now I'm gonna have okay. my headphones and my speakers on my, best, my desktop, right? Okay, so. now I've maybe, now I may be, I'm 27, 28, 29, 30. Now I got have a little, money, a little got a job. system in my living room. I've mm -hmm. got some basic bookshelf speakers. I've, you know, so that is the connection I see a lot of younger people coming into hi-fi with. So entry level having Bluetooth and Yeah, it's, and a, wi -Fi. it's the same as it was in the 70s where it's like you buy some JBL L100s and a little Marantz for your dorm room, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I had a little speaker system in my dorm room, right? Mm -hmm. I had a little headphone set up in my dorm room and, and that was, you know, that was, I had the connection already, but I, th I don't think it's different, you know, and I do see audiophiles, I see people who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, who are just getting in, and I see people who are in their, I'm 28, and I've been doing this for, like I said, like seven years, but I've been listening to hi-fi and into it for yeah, yeah. longer, since I was a little kid, you know, and so I, I think if the connection is there, one, and two, like you said, a HomePod, that's a thousand dollars for two HomePods, you can get a little NAD and some yeah. PSBs or something and have a pretty legit system yeah. for $500, $600, $800, you know? And it's an open system. You can, uh, you can add you can on listen, to it. You yeah. can plug in your iPod or, or iPhone or whatever. You can play records. You can, you know, stream. You can, like, and I know that some of those are not as audiophile, but, like, it's about listening to music, right? It's about having that relationship with the music. Talk um, about that with, with young people because they've also come up not having anything yeah. whether it's a cd yeah. or vinyl and it's mm -hmm. been very intangible and 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 th that goes to mm. this industry is a very tangible industry there's yeah. equipment there's hardware yeah uh, talk about how young people are dealing with it because a lot of times they are averse mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that they're they they do not want to be tied down to equipment or anything yeah. hardware related hi-fi elevates the the act of listening to music right like, even if you're listening only to digital, you have to turn your amp on, you have to, you know, plug in your speakers. You, like, you have to do stuff. You can't just press a button on your iPhone and navigate to Apple Music, right? Right. right. So there's a negotiation that I think has to happen in that, in that space because there is music that d is not available off of Spotify or YouTube, right? There is rare, weird stuff mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. I might want, I listen to it sometimes. And, like, I, I need those RCA cables from my Mac Mini or whatever, or my DAC or like my TV to like listen to that stuff. And I'm gonna listen to it. Mm. And maybe it's a snack. Maybe the quality of it is a snack, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I have the, the vinyl and I have the high res, the Koba streaming and, and digital files. Those are maybe a full meal, right? But I think the other element of this that's really important to remember is even though those are a full meal, right? Let's take high res digital files. Right you're still listening to the gear at a certain point, mm -hmm. right? So like if I'm listening for the high res element of the music file, I'm listening to the gear. And listening to the gear is an important part of being an audio file. That's exciting, that's why we're here. That's like why I come, right? Because we're nerds about the gear and it's yeah. fun, right? But on the other hand, that's Grover the audio file. Grover the person, right? I'm a musician, right? I'm queer, I, you know, I, um, I'm, you know, I have, I'm not straight, 
right? Like those are all other elements that like, I like to listen to a lot of Janelle Monae. You know, Janelle Monae is maybe not the most hi-fi, crystalline, clear, super <laughs> damp, whatever, but I love listening awesome. to it. I dance, I dance, do dance choreography, right? I, sometimes I listen to stuff, like I listen to lots of Michael Jackson. I know that so well, I can evaluate a hi-fi system on it. Yeah. Michael Jackson, yeah. it's maybe not the most hi-fi, mm. you know, recordings of all time, right. but like, it's got the groove, right? I understand what that groove does. So there's two brains, right? There's mm. the brain that, yeah, I listen to the gear and in my pro life with my ATCs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I need to know the gear does certain things and yeah. whatnot. And there's a joy there, right? It's the same joy that people who are gearheads who work on their cars get when they tinker yeah. with their car and also yeah. when they drive it or yeah. when they look at a cool car at a dealership, right? Exactly. It's the same joy that people who are into uh, watches get when they learn about all the you know, mechanisms and also when they wear it and just tell the time and it looks great, right? right? There's right. a duality there and neither mm. one is wrong. They're both right. right. You need to right. appreciate the gear to be an audiophile, yeah. I think. Yeah. But you also need to know when it's okay to relax and listen mm -hmm. to the music. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, different audio systems do different things. Some people have audio systems that speak to their head mm -hmm. and some people have audio systems that speak to their heart. Mm -hmm. I like an audio system which has enough tone for me to get goosebumps, but which also allows me when I want to dive, when I want to scuba dive and not just snorkel, I can do that with a recording, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Brahms, piano mm -hmm. trios. I want to dig deep. I want to really like just get inside of it. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's that's the place where like D'Agostino and Wilson, oh yeah, mm. that gets me deep inside in an analytical way that's mm -hmm. really cool. Gotcha. But in other times, like I want to listen to some Alan Parsons project or like, you know, Toto or, or, or Queen. Like, yeah, I want some tone. Give me some juice, <laughs> you know, give me some right. fat bottom. Right, give me right, some right, sparkly right. top, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's about context, much like music, right? When I make music, like when I'm making funk dance music, very different context from when I'm doing scoring work or charts for jazz exactly. or, or, or exactly. you know, movie film soundtrack stuff. It's all, it's music, all about the context yeah. and what's the mood and what are you trying to evoke, you know? Right. And I think in that right. context, right, like um, flavor or a take, it's important to have a take, you know, in hi-fi. Mm -hmm. And to what are you your, going for? Exactly, to your early point about diversity. It appeals to different listeners. Some listeners want to dance. Some listeners want to, right? Like, what is the listener's context, right? And if you can build, I think, the diversity of audio systems and they're not being a right answer for everything, mm. that's really an appealing idea conceptually. Isn't because, it? like, you build have, your own. Yeah, you have women, you have people of color, you have queer people, you have, yeah. you have all these different kinds of people in the industry. And we all have different personalities and listening, you know, like yeah. there's so many different ways to experience and enjoy the music. And I think yep. it's that diversity of sound is part of what pulls in, frankly, a very unusual and quirky crowd. Yes, we have a lot of the guys who remember the 70s and their old yep. systems and they're into that. And that, of course, is the majority of the North American market. But we do also have, you know, we have people like Doug White. He sells Tidal, right? That's really high end German stuff. And it's like. I mean, it's, you hear it and you're like, oh my God, it is crazy transparent and it's very finely finessed. And like, yeah. you know, and like Doug wants to hear a certain kind of thing, right? Dave McNair wants to hear a certain kind of thing. Eric Shook wants to, right? Cat like Orlean, right? Like, like we, we have women, we have, you know, we have younger people, we do have diversity in the industry. And I think part of the interesting thing to talk to those kind of people about is how they listen. And they all listen totally mm. different. Right. That's a good point. And you'll talk sometimes maybe to oh. the, you know, 60 year old audiophile who likes to listen to, you know, 70s rock on, you know, big speakers that are very transparent. And they only listen to vinyl and they have kind of the audiophile thing. Yeah. And I think about like how diverse or how sort of monolithic is their listening culture. Interesting. And I think you'd be surprised by some of the findings. I think you'd find more, you know, monolith in some places you don't expect. And I think, think you would find some more diversity in some places you don't expect too. I appreciate what you're saying. I, I, if, if I were, you were to snap your fingers and make it so that more young people could come, what, what would that look like? What would, what would happen? What, what does this industry need to do? What does the music industry need to do? It needs to be fun, right? There are examples of recent albums that were so killer that people were like, this is just just pours out, right? Like, for me, someone I love, whoever I mentioned, is like Janelle Monae. Man, you go to a Janelle Monae concert, you see old people, you see young people, you see large people, you see small people, you see black people, you see Asian people, you see white people, you see every kind of person, right? And they all love it, and they all love each other because they're having fun, and they can get down, and it makes them think in a certain way. So right? it starts there. It needs to be fun, right? Yeah. Play fun music, have fun stuff, be fun. You know, offer people a mint when they walk in. Be like, hey, what do you want to hear? <laughs> like, what's your, you know, what's your vibe? Right. You want to have a dance party? Like, bring bring your own vinyl, yeah, bring your yeah, own yeah. record. I, I love 
Africa by Toto, right? I love Toto 4. Brilliant album, like Rosanna. Don't remember anything in the middle, but Rosanna and Africa are brilliant tunes. Like, I love that stuff. But also, play me carefully curated modern stuff. Stuff like Goat Rodeo, right? Stuff like Ambrose Akin Musery. Stuff like, um, you know, like, like play me stuff that's like modern and cool too, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. There's great music out there that's being really, really well recorded. It's not just the old stuff. The new, there is new stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, the top 40 Billboard stuff might not be where you'll find, you know, but sometimes Justin Timberlake, those albums sound way better than you would expect them to sound, mm-hmm. right? So find the fun stuff that also sounds good and that will invite people in. That will make it fun. It's got to be fun, right? We're here to have fun, right? That's I know great. this because in my professional work, when I sit down and I work on my ATCs and I'm trying to analyze stuff or produce or like, I'm having fun in the creative flow. But I'm not thinking about what the gear sounds. I'm not having fun with the gear. I don't no. care about what the gear sounds like no. there, no. right? As long as it kind of just gets out of the way. It's, it's right? just flat. As long as but it's like, flat, yeah. At home, I use a 300 BM, you know? I want to have fun. Want to have some you fun? Know? I want to do fun. some little dancing and you know, enjoy if yourself. Getting, <laughs> if I'm getting goosebumps, right? If I'm getting goosebumps, That's cool. the system is in the right place. Grover, thank you so much for, for yeah. you know, being so open and willing to share these thoughts. It's been really enlightening. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you so much. It's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We are here at Expona 2023.